got an update on S Splinter Cell Remake. The Splinter Cell Remake is making progress at Ubisoft despite rumors that the game has been quietly cancelled. Insider Gaming has learned that the game is being developed under the codename North. In addition to the codename, sources have confirmed that the game is being built in the Snowdrop engine. In previous Splinter Cell games used Unreal Engine 2 and 2.5. Yes, that's how long it has been since we have gotten a Splinter Cell game. Unreal Engine 2.5. We're now at Unreal Engine 5.5. What is Ubisoft doing? Huh? So, the game was first announced in 2021. The Splinter Cell remake is being led by Ubisoft Toronto. I think that is the same studio that has made most of the Splinter Cell games, I think. The studio seemed to tease information on the game coming soon. However, that has yet to happen. I wonder what they're doing. <laughs> When it was first revealed, the game's producer, Matt West, said that it was in the very early stages of development. He added that the game was being built from the ground up with updates to the game's visuals while staying, while saying the game would remain linear. As we're building it from the ground up, we're going to update it visually as well as some of the design elements to match player comfort and expectations. And we are going to keep it linear like the original games, not make it open world. Wes said at the time and now the gameplay experience we are targeting is directly tied to what we want players to feel. To capture the essence back when we were all playing the original games as sources have suggested that the release date ah. sources have suggested that sources have suggested that a release date could come in 2026 but didn't want to be held to that time frame okay so release date could come in 26 doesn't mean the game is coming in 26 so probably 27 28 holy damn that's far off that is far off but i don't know if we ever watched this this is two years old but this is when they're announcing everything so let's jump in splinter cell is back ubisoft toronto has begun work on a remake of sam fisher's most classic operations and with the series return on the horizon, it's the perfect time to look back at the game that started it all. What the hell? I'm going to ask you some questions. Oh, that voice. I really hope if they remake in the game, they, they just remake the original games because they were peak. They were really good. Not Blacklist, though. I think you're lying. I'll do this. I who do you work for? Splinter Cell launched back in 2002, a time when Ubisoft was best known as the company that made Rayman, a bright and colorful platformer. <laughs> Splinter Cell was not that. It was a dark and serious stealth action game that favored slow, methodical movements mm -hmm. over frantic action. Oh. No one was quite sure how fans would react. Maybe it's better if I didn't Great game! To find out more about the development of that first game and the lasting effects it had... We and it was just random that I found the game. We were on a class trip to England, and we were at, at the mall. I don't remember where in England. And and I found this Splinter Cell. Like, it was a deluxe edition with a, with a sort of a... Not a purse, but I don't know what to call it. Uh, and there was, like, layers of layers of pages of the game. And when I came home, put in the disc, started playing the game. Oh, I loved it. From the first movement. Really good. I've been a fan since. To some of the folks that helped launch the original Splinter Cell, and some that are helping to bring it back. Oh, yes, I remember this. Sam Fisher. Oh, I yeah. I can't believe you beat me here. I like to be early. The very first time we really understood that we had a hit in our hands is, I guess, when we were talking to Microsoft. Like, we had that feeling, that gut feeling. But it wasn't validated by anything, and we never had a hit before at Ubisoft, like not a big one like that. <laughs> when Microsoft came to us and looked at it, they knew also something was up, and they were yeah, 
And when you run, you scroll up when you when you're gonna walk slowly or just walk, you know, sneak. Then you just scroll the mouse down, the mouse wheel. The controls were so good. Considering it for their E3 showcase at the time for showing up the Xbox. And it was super scary for us because we're like, how are people going to react? We don't well, it was a launch game. title for three, three no, not for three, six, but Xbox. Screen. Is it going to show off its colors? The feedback we received uh, from E3 was so incredible. So it just gave us, uh, gave us a huge push to, uh, to get things done and get this game to the level of the expectations. Mm. Probably for E3 and for our competitors and for um you know for for players at large look at that look at that probably came out of nowhere there was this whole whoa who who is ubisoft it was a transformation of what ubisoft could do <laughs> and how who is ubisoft well we know today greedy bastards that's that's who they are they were regarded that was very special because at that time uh, at ubisoft montreal um, we were producing games, but we were not in a, in a triple A mind mindset at that time. And this game became somehow a, a great inspiration from the teens. And from mm -hmm. that moment, uh, when Splinter Cell did release with uh, a very cool feedback and, and nice reviews and, and nice popularity as well, this, this has been an incredible trigger for the whole studio to reach for this level of achievement for other games oh. but what exactly was it that drew in audiences at that e3 what did splinter cell do that set it apart from the crowd yeah the answer so as great. it turns out was pretty black and white light shadow it's instantly relatable and instantly something that you so know easy to, to understand people paid attention because they had never seen such amazing visuals at first that whole shadow and light was oh. beautiful oh yeah the the, the ray the rays, what is it called? This, this, I don't know. The sun rays, whatever, the light, I don't know. It was so good back then. When you saw that through the windows or whatever. Oh, it was so good. And then the movement, the rolling, it was so smooth. Everything was just peak. It was giving a dimension that they had never played with. And it had to do with the, the Xbox and the ability of the Xbox to render these dynamic lights with dynamic shadows and dynamic real-time shadows and... Um, and it was really the ambition of the team huh? uh, early on to, to push the, the, the visual fidelity of the game. As, as far this was 2002, I think, was it? I, 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 I'm not sure. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> they had the technology back then. So why the hell was the Star Wars Outlaws a little bit better? Like stealth. Like, they're known for the stealth games as we could the way art and level design had to work together um to deal with you know how dynamic lights would affect oh yeah shoot it as well as the visuals was probably ah, one of the biggest challenges. i shot every light i shot every light it was so awesome <laughs> and then did you hide sneak oh and then night vision just ding. oh ah. Give me a new one now. Challenges of development. It was one of those times where a game came out and just really had a brilliant presentation that was so critical for the actual design itself. So you can only imagine how exciting that would have been for the team. The first time we saw the, you know, the fish tanks that you could, you know, you could shoot oh, the fish tanks yeah. and the water would lower down with the with the stream and down to the level of the bullet hole, and then it would stop. Oh. And you know, you could keep shooting it and lowering it little tweaks yeah. like that little mm, little I surprises remember. that that you know people just found the time and the energy to put in to add the polish and the, and the care to the game uh that was great i remember thinking to myself you know i was super blown away by the the tech advances that were part of that game the stencil shadows and the, the moving cloth oh. and you know uh, the thermal goggles and all of the stuff and i just remember thinking to myself you know um how that was even possible at the time Visually right amazing you know the, right the light effects were remarkable ahead of anything else that was being done at the time but it was even more than that the use and exploitation of light and shadow set Splinter Cell apart from its competitors, but it would take more than that. Yeah, you could shoot like almost every light source. And, and like they say, the graphics, the shadows, and like the dynamic of it all. It was just, it was, 
when you think back, it's a little too good to be true. But because now in gaming, I think we're moving a little backwards than forward, which is kind of sad. Like it's all about money and just deliver a product. It doesn't need to be a good product because like, hey, you can fix it down the road, right? But back then you couldn't. You had to wait months for just a small little fix. And when the patch first came, you had to download it. Damn. If you had internet though. If you had internet. And if you did have internet. Damn, it was slow. <laughs> but yeah. To deliver on the development team's promise. A promise they felt so strongly about, they put it right on the box art. Stealth Action Redefined was born out of the fact that this was it was this was a challenge to the god of tactical espionage action which and was, they did uh, good the assault. It, it was really the mission that splint cell set out for itself it was okay if we're going to take espionage if we're going to take stealth action how are we going to position that in a way that fits the tom clancy Oof. brand values as well we yeah had Rainbow Six, Red Storm was working on Ghost Recon. Those were obvious Tom Clancy games. But Splinter Cell came from Montreal. And Montreal wasn't working on Tom Clancy at the time. And when we looked at it, we looked at the fantasy, we looked at um, the realism and the techno thriller aspect of it. We figured that would perfectly fit under Tom Clancy. Back then, there was a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of games that were very kind of heavy on just shoot, kill, be done that's how you get yeah. through these situations um Splinter Cell made you slow down it made you think it made you kind of try okay when you see the love and the care that the the developers show and talk about i mean wow huh i feel like maybe they're making the, i think they're cooking right here guys understand the threats that were ahead of you and it layered all of those features together um, and it rewarded players for thinking differently, for, for being a bit more kind of patient with, you know, the, the way that they chose to, to solve those situations. The idea of being the one who can make the difference, who can go into those places that no one's supposed to be able to go to and do what no one's supposed to be able to do, <laughs> that's an incredibly powerful fantasy. And it's a lot of fun to be that person. We used an actor yes. that was a recognized person. That was new at the time. Anybody have a line back to Third Ash? I'm here, Fisher. What the hell's going on? Nicolas just declared war on the U.S. What? Now it's something that a lot of people do. A lot of game publishers. It's kind of normal. I mean, the cutscenes still look good to this day. Of course, the graphics, no. But I mean, the. The in-game cutscenes. I, I like the movement. Huh? Look at this. Here, Fisher. What the hell's going on? Nicolas just declared war. Not bad, on the right? US. What? Now it's something that a lot of people do. A lot of game publishers. It's kind of normal, but at the time it wasn't. And we really looked at it like first it was a Clancy brand, so we looked at it like something bigger than just a video game. Marketed it that way and created a persona. Sam's a great character. Um, he, um, he's smart, yes. he's funny, he's fast. He's, uh, I think, in my opinion, Sam Fisher is very close to um, Arthur Morgan. Yeah, seriously. Like, he's so great. He does what he can do um, with a minimum. Especially when he found out he has a daughter. That makes it just so much impactful what, is the, uh, what he does. Minimal waste, he's... Uh... High speed, low drag, and he's just an incredibly fun character to play. While Sam is unequivocally the star of the Splinter Cell franchise, let's be honest, he'd get nowhere without his signature night vision goggles. Not only are they an essential tool in Sam's arsenal, they're the symbol of the entire franchise. Mm -hmm. Those three green dots and that iconic sound. Oh. Yep, that's. <laughs> Again. Again. Those three green dots and that iconic sound. Yep, that sound is enough to know exactly what game you're dealing with. The sound came in very late, and I think that uh, we didn't realize how important and valuable it was until someone said, you know, we really got to have a much more iconic sound in here somewhere. And yeah. it had this kind of very military uh, um, feel to it. We were trying to create something that felt very realistic and modern and you know just because of the speed at which technology moves 
it kind of became its own thing in 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 time and it adhered to sort of the genuineness of it and and kind of stuck and it split 19 oh. years ago splinter cell put ubisoft on the map and changed the landscape for stealth action games across the industry now thanks to the upcoming remake a brand new generation can experience the best splinter cell has to offer for future updates on the splinter cell remake follow this channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com remake okay so so it is so it is a remake of the first one they didn't say reboot they said remake and i think it said the same thing in the article wow okay if they use the same actor the voice actor i like i'm in i'm all in I'm, I'm all in either way, but <laughs> we have to wait so long, but Unreal Engine 2.5. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Like, when did Blacklist come out? 2003. So, yeah, it's about time we got a new Splinter Cell.